Carry On Crow. Rachel Carey and Mark Windsor are crow shooting with the aptly named Andy Crow. We're learning mountain survival skills in Kyrgyzstan. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're back in the Tian Chan mountains of Kyrgyzstan after mid-Asian ibex. Of the three hunters on this extraordinary trip, Tomo Svetik of Artemis Hunting already has his trophy animal. Now it's all systems go to get Rob and Craig theirs. Not everyone understands trophy hunting, but there's no other way to make this pay. If you shoot just for meat, you won't get any money. But if it's trophy hunt, we are talking about thousands and thousands of euros. They sell one trophy, which keeps whole camp going. With Ibex spotted grazing in the distance, Rob is dispatched with Urkis to get one. The scale of the exercise is plain to see, and unfortunately, so are the guys. The ibex herd disperses before they are anywhere near taking a shot. We thought there were four or five ibex there, and when they started running, it was 15 or 20, so it's just so difficult to see them. They're that well camouflaged, so they just stop learning. It's just how it is. After a morning of riding and glassing, we head ever upwards into the snow line. This silhouette on the cliff top gives renewed hope. We're at 3755 altitude, some ibex in front of us. We've got some on the line, and I believe there's some just over the edge. So we need to kind of a Urkus has been up to have a look at them, but we're worried about the daylight now. So we're going to call it a night and we're going to go up tomorrow on the horses around the back of the mountain range and then try and come down on top of them. We've moved us to another location now, only about 600 yards up, and we're now we're searching the skyline to see if there's any ibex nearer to us and that we can shoot at tonight. And the reason for that is we're in a very big valley here. So if the wind changes direction, it'll just blow our scent straight to the ibex. And the valley will be clean in the morning, there'll be nothing for us. So it's better to take your chances while you've got them. So we're exhausting every opportunity now to see if we can actually find something that we can shoot at tonight. Um, instead of taking the risk for the morning, it's not looking promising. We haven't got a lot of daylight left. It's looking like we're going to be camping here tonight and taking our chances. The day is all but over, but then Rob glasses the valley floor and spots these animals. We've come over the other side of the ridge and there's another herd of ibex on this side. There's three very mature fellows there, chaps. So uh, we've ranged like 698 yards. We've got a little bit of wind, so I'm going to have to aim just on the front of the shoulder. But um, I could, I've got time to place myself really well. So let's see how we go. Oh, yes, OK, OK. What a great effort. The ibex drops where it stands. It was a tool, did it? Come on. What a shot. 
First Ibex, and uh, look, I'll, I'm sure I'll be back. I probably don't need to shoot another one myself, but I'd love to be here to see my friends do something like this. It's very, very special. Fantastic shooting. It doesn't matter what you can say to somebody, do this, do that, do the other, but at the end of the day, it's a very, very small target. And um, fair play to the guy. It just died instantly. It couldn't have been any better. It wasn't easy, so yeah, I'm, I'm so, so pleased that I was there and I saw it. The guides moved the Ibex to a suitable place to set up camp. What a climax to a very challenging day. Rob has walked miles. Even Urkis is suffering in his wellies. I felt embarrassed yesterday. I was climbing up a scree slope and um, Urkis was, he's in Wellington boots. We came down a rock face that if I'd been in Europe, I would have put a rope on for. And uh, there the guy's flying down there in his Wellington boots. Had a blister at the end of the day. We, we fixed him up a bit, which, uh, which is good, but uh, they just don't complain. Tomo's man on the ground in Kyrgyzstan is Arvat. He tells us about the sort of men Erkis, Ulan and Aman are. All the guys are locals raised in these mountains, been hunting since they've been uh, teenagers or something. So they have a lot of hunting experience. Most of the year they do the cattle farming and stuff in the, in the summertime. And when it comes to the hunting season, they come to the mountains uh, to guide. They're not allowed to shoot uh, ibexes until 2016, and the Marco Polo have been banned like for 20 years or something. Okay. Tell me about the gold teeth. It's an Asian kind of mentality, showing your wealth. If you get golden teeth, even if it's copper or something, showing your wealth. To get to know our guides a bit better, Arvat asks them some general questions on our behalf, such as favourite Hollywood star. <laughs> So the muscles from Brussels has made his mark here. And as Rob's pony is called Jackie Chan and Tomo's Tyson, we get an idea of their screen heroes. And what if they had all the money in the world? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he would lay just on top of it and, and share it to the people who goes by and it's like, you need some? There you go. There you go. Pulling the trigger is a tiny, tiny part of what this is about, right? Most people like to come and do a lot of shooting. I wanted to get one shot and I wanted to do it right. And I'm extremely satisfied and pleased that I managed to do that for the sake of the animal and for the sake of my friends around me and for the sake of myself. And that makes me feel well about it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's magic. I couldn't recommend it more highly if that's what you want. It's a beautiful place and um, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. As they carefully pack the meat, they give Rob the retrieved bullet. Craig's rifle is a 300 Remington Ultramag, so that's the case and the bullet. Um, but if you look, it's really opened up. And at 698 yards, that's pretty impressive that we're still packing a hell of a lot of energy. So delighted to have found that. The group is all a bit grimy by now and so is the kit. Rob loves the idea you can throw everything in a stream and give it a darn good wash. We've been on horseback for about the last five days now and things get very dusty and dirty quickly. So my equipment needs to really be able to cope with that. In this case I've got a Blazer R8 in 308 it's a smashing bit of kit, very durable and puts up with a lot of hammering. And most importantly for me, I can do this with it. I can clean the thing in the field. I've got a blazer bipod there, nothing to rust or corrode on that. I've got Swarovski optics. Again, I need to be able to do this, get all the dust out the lenses. And with the rifle, the same goes. Now, I was in Scotland the week before last on the stags 
and um, I fell over in a peat hag and blocked this barrel. Um, and actually, it, uh, I was able to blow the barrel out and just wash it in the stream. And hey presto, we have a pretty dust-free gun now. Tomo and Rob are now heading back to camp, taking both Ibex off the mountain, leaving Craig to continue the hunt along with Aman. He has one day left to find his Ibex. It's a very special ride home, back along the mountain passes, and then two hours along the river bed. Everyone's thoughts are with Craig, who will push hard for another day. While we wait for him, Dr Rob has some words of advice for any mountain hunter. One crucial thing that I absolutely cannot rate more highly is coconut fat. You can use it for absolutely everything. You can eat it. You can use it on burnt skin if you've got sunburnt, but you can also use it, if, like me, if I get a sore arse or something, I can put it on my arse. It's antibacterial, use it on your skin, stick it on your blend when it's all sore and horrible. It does everything. I used to bring a lot of different sort of ointments, if you like, up in the mountains. Now I just bring that. It serves the purpose. You can even fry eggs if you're lucky enough to find some eggs in it. Oh, oh yes, oh. oh. <laughs> a jar of it, I think it's about eight quid, but it lasts forever. I would use it on my gun if, um, if I had nothing else to protect the metal components. I'm sure it's better than having nothing, but I use it for absolutely everything. Life will never be the same again. And thankfully, Craig returns just in the nick of time. Tired and without his Ibex, but it's been a blast. He's tried to punish me a little bit. He wanted to come home yesterday. I said, no, no, shoot. He was walking the horses down the mountains and the horses were stopping him because horses didn't want to go down. So he had a, a bungee, if you like, and I was miles behind me because it was, oh, it was stupid. I've got blisters all over my feet. And then when he got to the bottom, he walked 200 yards with the horses, so I had to walk to him. <laughs> but no, it was good, it was a good adventure, really good. David has also had a trip of a lifetime. Plus, the guys have finally fessed up about the pony nuts. It isn't the horse's testicle, it is cheese. But the mm-mm, didn't tell me that at the time, they only revealed that later on in the trip. So it is cheese, salty cheese. So I was eating salty cheese and Rob Gearing knew it was salty cheese, so you lot are horrible. <laughs> if you want to find out how you can get yourself a mid-Asian Ibex, contact Artemis Hunting at artemis-hunting.com. Well done, Tomo, Rob, Craig and David. Now we were supposed to give away a Harkila backpack, a set of tier one mounts, a javelin, bipod and some pony nuts from last week's Kyrgyzstan film. We will do that, we'll do that next week. You can still enter, but I completely forgot about a competition from September when David went up a hill with Tim Pillbeam in Scotland after stags in the midges. That was for a pair of Harkila gaiters. Here are the entrants on my phone in a rather techie way. I scroll up and I choose a winner like this. And the winner is M.F. Caruana. M.F. Caruana. He says, gators in Maltese are called Gok Zuni. Anyway, great episode as always. Thank you very much, M.F. Caruana. A pair of gators heading out to Malta to you now. And now, from someone who knows his gators from his garters, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. With Halloween coinciding with most of the opening meets this year, it was the South Erridge Hunt that took the prize for best costumes. Their costumes did not please the Antis, however, who came as true horror stories in black balaclavas and ISIS-style scarves. The Antis are trying to stop the South Downs traditional Boxing Day meet in Lewis High Street. You can sign the petition to keep it going by going to bit.ly forward slash hunt meet. The Crown Prosecution Service has dropped yet more charges against hunt staff and hunt masters. The CPS emailed Devon and Somerset huntsman Donald Summersgill and Joint Masters Rupert Andrews and David Greenwood to tell them it would not be using video supplied by employees of the League Against Cruel Sports. The animal rights organisation had been pushing for an expensive taxpayer-funded trial. The Pakistani government is allowing a Saudi prince to export protected falcons. A permit to export 10 falcons had been issued to Prince Fahd bin Sultan bin Abdul Aziz. 
the governor of the Saudi province of Tabuk. Last year, Prince Fahad was in trouble for hunting 2,100 Hubara bustards in Balochistan, around 2% of the global population of this bird. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Wildlife Department has arrested four people on charges of poaching Sulman Makhor. Thanks to Sardar Samid for sending in the story. American presidential candidates have been proving their hunting credentials at the opening of the pheasant season. It's as traditional as the New Hampshire primaries and Turkey for Thanksgiving. The autumn before a presidential election, the candidates go shooting for the cameras. A pheasant hunting weekend drew Ted Cruz, Bobby Jindal, Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee to the Hole in the Wall Lodge outside Sioux City, Iowa. And finally, a moose hunter swam across a partly frozen lake to rescue his dog, which had become trapped in ice. Footage of the moment when Swedish hunter Jonas Jund risked his life to save his dog Rocky has gone viral, with the Swedish pet owner being hailed a hero on social media. He was hunting a moose with his dog when the moose ran into a frozen lake. Rocky gave chase, and although the moose made it across to the small island in the middle of the lake, the dog became stuck. Eventually the pair make it to the other side, with Rocky keen to continue the chase. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now we have another competition. A few weeks ago, we dragged this coat through a hedge backwards. Roll the film. It's a Greenland jacket from Shooter King. It's worth £179 and you can win it if you leave a relatively positive comment about it below this film or on this film's page on Facebook. Don't forget to say what size you want. They are offering extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL and even 5XL. They are sending you a new one, you know. Next up, let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. Uh, Richard and Tommy just out on the first day at the Hill Farm Syndicate. Um, yeah, nice day so far. Just had a bit of lunch. Back out on it this afternoon. Hello Charlie. Sandy here from North Wales on a misty uh, North Wales uh, misty October morning. Uh, out on the out on the crows trying to nail a few. Hello Charlie. This is Ben from North Yorkshire here. Don't know if you can see me. It's a bit dark. Nice and starting to draw in now, and I thought I'd get out for the last chance of a rowboat before the end of the season. Um, here I'm having a bit out of breath. I've just had a nice left and a right. Not only just a rowboat, but a nice fellow book as well. Have a look at these beauties. Lovely jubbly. Hello, Charlie. It's Vinny from Essex. Been out on the geese today. Got a few as you can see. Uh, keep hunting, keep shooting. It's better than any day at school. Hi, I'm Nico Schultz from Germany. And I live in Hamburg and I hunt in the beautiful county of Mecklenburg and I would like to say to all your stuff and everybody, Hello Charlie! That's it, please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Please keep them coming. Now, Crowman has been obvious by his absence of late, but he's back and with a new gun dog. Andy Crow hasn't had a go at the crows since that monumental day with George Digweed. 585 birds later, they were done. This time he's got Top Shots, Mark Windsor and Rachel Carey down for the shooting. We've sown the field next door. Uh, that's gone into winter wheat after maize. This is a maize field. Um, there's been a lot of crows digging it up and they've been out here on this maize stubble which we haven't ploughed yet for obvious reasons, it's wet. Um, so Mark and Rachel have come down today to try and make a bit of a bag on them. They, but there is a few pigeons here as well so I'm going to make a, an area of crows and just have down the, the bottom edge I'm going to put an area of uh, pigeons up because that's my favourite anyway so I can hopefully whack into a few pigeons. There is quite a few pigeons migrating through here today. They're running a bit late this year. I think they might have found acorns and a lot of feed on the way down. We're going to have two hides, one there, one there. Uh, Rachel being one, Mark being the other one, um, and I should be there covering because I'll spit here and miss a few, so you need someone to help him out. It won't be another red letter day, but there are plenty of corvids and migrating pigeons working through this part of the UK. 
Is it a lot closer patterns for crows? Yeah, they, they tend to feed a lot closer, so when you see them feeding, they're a bit closer, but I'll open them up a bit, a little bit, but I do tend to have them a bit closer, yeah, yeah. Carol has sent me, uh, sent me some silla socks down. I've got the silla sock pigeon decoys, I'll use them when I'm travelling light. Um, so I've got some of these. As it is, there's not a lot of wind today, but when there's a lot of wind, the old wind fills the sock up and they do move about. Um, crows do, they like it, there's a little bit of movement, they, but they don't need too much. They, you wouldn't want a whirly, don't use whirlies when you're with the crows. I don't have any, I've never had any success with them. Impressed with Andy's personalised Gerber chopper from UK Shoot Warehouse, Mark now has one, but apparently he needs two hands to wield it. As he leaves it in the car, we have no proof of this. Mark and Rachel have only recently come back from South Africa, where Mark was competing, but now the clays are taking a back seat. I've had a few days on the crows before, yeah, never with the, uh, the man himself. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's the first time shooting crows with Mr. Crow, so I'm looking forward to it. End of season for you now, though? End of season for me, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's just a few small competitions, such as Winter Series Fit Ass and things like that, which I will be taking part in, but it will go to the back seat now, play shooting. It's more pheasants and, pheasants and fun, so it should be, uh, should be a good day, hopefully, today. Now, you may have noticed that Rachel and her French Bulldog Bunny are really entering into the spirit of things with Halloween camo. Bunny is not the perfect colour for a gum dog and could probably do with a bit more body art. No, Ruby, no. Bit of a shame. Means I'm going to have to do a bit of running around, so... I don't like putting on the crows, um, for obvious reasons. Sharp beaks, eyes. Um, makes it a bit hard, but well, it can make them hard mouth because they tend to pick the crows up and if, if they are winged, they turn around and go for them, so they tend to crunch them harder, so I don't want them on crows. Um, it's three of us, so we can run about. Crow has made two hides for the three guns, 30 yards apart. Pigeons and corvids are fair game, and Mark gets one of each as soon as we get settled. Now, although you can't use electronic calls for crows, you can use mouth calls. And Matt from MPK Custom Calls has sent one to Andy to work with. Go on then. I'm so sorry, Matt. Matt also offers lessons on how to make the most of his beautiful, award-winning calls. That decoy pattern had better work. And work it does. The corvids are not diving in like pigeons, but gliding over. After some steady shooting, Crow breaks open the sandwiches. Salmon and smoked cheese. Do you think you've changed? Oh, definitely. Since I've met Andy, I've gone up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, uh, I think he's. I think he's a bit embarrassed that he actually made these this morning, and he's passing the buck to Michelle. Mm. So hopefully Michelle doesn't see this. I reckon all credit to Andy for these beautiful sandwiches. In that case, I'll have another bite. Smack straight through the head. Place to clear them up as you shoot them. Otherwise, they, if they're not looking right, especially if they're outside the pattern, they tend to come across and uh, come across, see them, and uh, go back before they're in range. So, a place to keep the pattern tidy, keep them in tight. Because they, if they something not quite right, at least then they're in range um, to shoot if they, they get a bit wary. Corvids are definitely a harder bird to kill than pigeons. So, what shells would the guys advise for this type of shooting? Usually go for fives. Um, I usually use. I use pigeon extreme most of the time anyway. So I use a clear pigeon when uh, when I'm over decoys and that. If they're decoying well, it's a bit bit overkill using the, a serious cartridge like the pigeon extreme. So but that's why I use uh, the game ball clear pigeon over decoys. But yeah, I use the I use fives on. It does because like some of these today they've been pretty high. Yeah, 100% right. On, on a crow, you want a little bit of a heavier pellet, preferably a five, wouldn't you, Andy? Yeah. Fives are the best because they hit so much harder, you see. Um, sixes are okay, but if you get that real big, if you get that real high, up here. If you get, there we go. If you get that real high crow, and he's just out of range, a six just won't cut it. It's... He missed. 
Yeah. Yeah. Six in the right place will do it, but a five, you just know you've got that 100% if that pattern's in the right position, um, that crow's coming down. Thank you, Andy. Even got a loading service today. You asked me if I've changed earlier on, he's changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's not it. These birds make no money at a game dealer, but an effort made now may help make your farmer friend feel warm and fuzzy, thus securing your pigeon shooting for another season. It could be worth the investment. Um, so yeah, yeah, I've got a bit of game shooting coming up. Um, try and get out and get some rabbits this week. Now things are uh, a nice shot. Um, yeah, now. Now things I'm on top of me work, I'll, I'll get out and shoot some rabbits. So, got a nice new hand shorts to try out. So yeah. Happy days. Happy days, yeah. Yeah, it will be happy days. And then I'm off on holiday. Even happier days. Even happier days. Top up the tan. When David heads off to get his witch's outfit on, Crow, Mark and Rachel have 50 on the deck, but nearly double the score by the time they pack up. They won't have made much of a dent in the huge Corvid numbers around at the moment, but they have, they hope, bounced them on. Ruby the Fox Red Labrador will of course be back in her rightful place next to Crow next time. Now from French Bull Terriers to international breeds, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. It's a big week for pigs, and I start with California wild pig hunt in Paso Robles. They bag six nice hogs over a weekend in October. Called wild boar hunting, this one is in Turkish, but you get a good sense of what's going on, the landscape and the wildlife, thanks to well-placed trail cams. Hunting outfitters around the world are displaying their wares on YouTube. Saboniak reckons best place for boar and for ducks is its place in the south of France. In the same tradition, this is a schmaltz but hey, why not snip it about hunting buffalo in Inkulu African Safari's hunting area in South Africa. Christopher Clausen is off to Poland to shoot foxes. He shows how he calls them in and shoots them in English. Polish foxes speak English. Varminter UK tends to get going with his videos during the shooting season, so let's hope there's more to come following first day driven pheasant shooting of the 2015 season in the UK. It's a bit wet. Bag is 44. Zubtech is out in Australia showing a short, sharp high seat film. It's a late season fallow buck at 190 yards in New South Wales. And finally, Jaeger magazine is after red stags in the rut in Scotland. He gets onto a nice stag, holding hinds about three minutes in. It looks like it's somewhere in the west coast. All glory to you if you know where. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you don't like that, how about this? It's the latest airheads. This week, the king of African air gunning, Matt Dubber, better known as Air Arms Hunting SA, is over in Kent with Kai at Bryn, and they are looking for squirrels. There is hot air news, there is air streaming. Click on the link to watch the show. Now, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box. We'll constantly contact you about our show. It's out at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. It's Field Sports Britain, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.